Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Place Factorio Space Exploration. And I'm very happy to say I've sorted out that horrendous situation with the with the railways and the stations from last time. So now things are looking much, much better up here in space. <laughs> As you can see, I've now got this nice grid array of um, drop-off stations and warehouses and an individual station for each one. Now I'm still using 1-1 one -one size trains, so these are pretty small um, but then I don't feel I need much more space than this because I get the feeling that most of the stuff that's going to be happening up here on the space station is going to be relatively slow relatively low throughput uh, with the possible except with the possible exception of making the memory cards up here but even that actually that seems to ground to a halt I'm gonna to have to have a look at why that that's happened in a moment um, so I think having these these small trains is probably going to be enough, um, and if it isn't, then I'm just going to have to deal with it and maybe come up with some sort of improved system later on. Uh, so they're all pretty simple. Each one is a um, uh, let's look at them properly. Each one is a landing pad with an appropriate name like Red Circuit Drop. Uh, the, the rocket turns up here. The all the, everything gets put into the landing pad. It gets passed into the chest, in, into the warehouse, and then a train can turn up and grab it. And because as you can see here I've got the the signals on the inside of the these loop bits so even when a train is stopped here it doesn't stop the previous one from coming out of here the only way it'll jam up is if we've got if we get two trains trying to go to the same station at the same time and fingers crossed hopefully that won't happen but even if it does it doesn't take that long to load up a a, a, a single wagon with with six inserters piling the stuff into it so it shouldn't be there for too long there are a few of the stations where I've had a bit of an excess of stuff from one failure or another or just from accumulating it because there was a lot piled up on the belts and it just happened to have happened to be very very full perhaps a rocket had just come in or something so there are a few stations where there are some extra chests that are unloading into the um, into the landing pad and then that'll just delay the next rocket before it comes out so and there's there's so there's, there's three or four like that there are a couple of other special cases. So down here we've got for coal, um, ice, and cryonite. I've deliberately, very deliberately, put these ones at the bottom here. So they're feeding the, their supplies straight out into my liquid processing facility because uh, that's where all of these things were needed. And so they, uh, and that solved one of the problems I was scratching my head with a bit before when I had them in the um, the previous rather ugly setup because there were, where there wasn't actually room for me to do this particularly easily. So this is this has sorted that out nicely. And as you can see, they're all unloading from the um, from the warehouses in the same way that the uh, the train would. So that means they're running from the same supply, and they can just use all of the same sort of logic to make sure they never run out of stuff. At least in theory, they'll never run out of stuff as long as there's always plenty of stuff ready to be brought up by the rockets. <laughs> the uh, the exception to that at the moment is the blue circuits, which are being made very very slowly on uh, Henkis as we've seen before, um, because they rely on the uh, on the stone production from um, from the uh, <laughs> from the um, which one is it Holmium processing to to actually get the, all the resources they need. I've also got a few spare um, landing pads up here, so these can be filled up as and when required. I and mean, these three haven't even got the uh, their um, uh, warehouses yet because I ran out of ran out of parts. But that doesn't matter. There's 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 one there's a spare one here and yeah we're we're getting on okay. We also don't have any U two three five yet, but I have put in a um, a delivery system down on Norvis. It's just we're not producing it all that quickly down there, so it's gonna take a while to get an entire rocket full um, and so we just have to wait. I might go over there and put some more centrifuges in actually because it is it is running very very slowly at the moment. So all of this is now uh, should 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 at least be fine. Um, as I mentioned before, I've removed the long pipe and long belts that were going down to here. I haven't actually put in the um, disposal systems for this for these um, resources yet. I need to I need to put in another three higher priority LTN stations. Oh my goodness, we've got a lot of stone going on up here at the moment, but hopefully we'll start churning through that at some point. Um, so this is all. I mean, this this is is fine. It, it basically works. It's just we're uh, it's just a bit overloaded on the the iron and copper outputs. Um, I have put in I have LTN'd up this um, bio sludge station, and this one is is sort of done. I think this is probably about the same stage as it was last time we looked at it. Actually, I, I still need to run the piping for that. Uh, so those that was the, the the first thing I've been doing up here, and this is this is a massive improvement. This actually works, which is rather nice. Unlike it turns out this. So let's see what's wrong here. Why you've got, not got any polished substrate? You've not got any. Is that full? Yes. Okay. So this is filled up, and for some reason it hasn't summoned the train. Why not? So minus fifteen thousand. Okay. We've only. 
Um, output, it's outputting one green, so why are you not? Station enables when green is greater than zero, so it is now enabled, I think. Yes, that's enabled. Oh, this isn't emptied. Because this this is what this is what's ground to a halt. Ah, because the cosmic water tank here is full. Right, okay. So I can't really deal with this from here because at the moment, because I'm down on Norvis getting ready for the next stage. Um so up here, this is just going to have to wait. Um, but at least I know why it's failed. It's because this cosmic water tank here is filled up, and I need to pump this off into the um, into the tanks up here, so it's ready to be shipped out by the uh, by, by the LTN system and, and, and taken. To be honest, taken back up here to just go around this this loop again. But um, unfortunately, at the moment, it can't do that. So, okay, that's what that's. What, I I know why that stopped, so I'm reasonably happy. Let's uh, let's put in some notes. So. Um, The other thing I need to do down here, which was in the to-do list, is I've realised there's no fuel for this train. I mean, at the moment it's okay because I shoved some um, some rocket fuel in it, so that's going to keep it going for quite a long time. Uh, that signal shouldn't be there. I need to deal with that. Um, so what I'm going to do is apparently you can just whack vulcanite straight into a train. So I'm going to put a splitter in here, run it up here, through here, and then just load it straight into the train, and that'll keep it powered. Uh, from what I gather, vulcanite is about as effective as coal for as being as a um, as a fuel source for trains, but to be honest, that's that's good enough. I don't need I don't need it to be any better than that. Um, coal speed is absolutely fine. In fact, that's what all the rest of the that's what all the rest of the trains are running off down here. So the other big thing I've I've, I've done recently is I've started setting up um, all of the things I need for um, making energy science. Well, at least energy science. Well. The plan is to make Energy Science 1 and 2, um, as, as shown on this diagram here. And as you can see, a lot of the ingredients for Energy Science 2 are also ingredients for Energy Science 1. So the plan is, so far I've built up, or at least I've plotted out, these are the, these are making the 1, 2, 3 and 4 uh, data types for Energy Science 1. I also need this one and this one to be passed into Energy Science 2, as you can see here. Uh, so the idea is that these will all feed onto a bus and we can just we can just make it make all of those on a, on a sort of a, a bus going up this way uh, now there's a as you can tell by the way the the railway lines are all over the place here there's been a bit of a bit of a sh a bit of a shortage of forward planning should we say um, so I, I I basically I didn't I didn't build this far enough out from the railway system so there wasn't enough room for all of the stuff I was going to be flowing along here so there's been a bit of a sort of a squeezing in of various things along here I'm also going to need to extend these rails up a bit further and I'm going to do that by um, I'm also going to move them across a bit to the to the left or to the can I call it west when we're in space I don't know over to this side anyway uh, so they'll run up and down about here and then I can fit in a couple a few more stations along here one of them is going to be for LTN drop for the uh, chemical gel because we don't have there isn't really room to put a pipe through there I probably could manage it if I absolutely had to but I don't really want to squeeze it through if I, if I don't have to and I'm also going to need a couple of extra um, solid ingredients I think for um, for science for energy science two and definitely some more for three and four so I'm gonna I want to have the potential to fit more stations in up here and more stuff on, on, on the bus um, and I'm also going to need to have some pickup stations. So there's going to need to be one for recycling to get rid of this uh, contaminated scrap. There's clean scrap coming out somewhere up here. And we're also going to have defunct memory cards coming out as well from at least one of these systems. I forget which one. Yeah, here we go. So this one, this one is. I think this one is spitting out scrap and de and defunct memory cards. And all of these need to go out onto some disposal belts over here and then be fed into into trains and, and shipped off back to where they can be dealt with. And as part of doing that I'm going to need to put in another drop-off station here because I haven't got any sort of input for reformatting memory cards so I'm also going to need a drop-off station for dead memory cards um, so that's, that's, and, and then this this is all one big thing that I'm, I'm pretty much aware of. We've also got in the um, uh, nice, a nice series of set setup of uh, chillers and things here for the thermofluid. So the thermofluid is coming in by train, as you've, as you've, you've seen, you've seen how I've sort of designed that up. And then it goes on onto the pipe here, goes through the first set of chillers, and we get out the cold, cool thermofluid at a, a nice balmy minus 10 degrees there. Uh, and, and I've got a cunning system of pumps here that will pump um, based on exactly how much is in this tank. So if the tank is 
um under ten thousand then we'll top it up with this to make sure we've always got some in fact i don't come to think of it i don't know why i'm doing that at all and if it's over twenty thousand then we pump it back out again now ideally this th these machines should probably be a little bit further up and running off a separate separate pipe system um the other thing to, oh, that was why i meant to press <laughs> the other thing to note about it um, is these are running on the very very slow recipe so this takes uh, where is it 200 seconds to run which is a very long time but it does produce 499 cool thermofluid and the reason I'm using this recipe is because it's the most um, it's the most efficient it does the least damage to your thermofluid so if I look at um, if I look at things you can do with with cold, with warm thermofluid um, you can cool it this way which is what I'm doing at the moment this takes so this takes 200 seconds in one of those oh, it's only 100 seconds in a radiator 2 which is what I'm using here so it's not quite so bad um, and you only lose 0.2 percent of what you of the of the thermofluid you're chilling this one you can do it 50 at a time it takes five it takes five seconds but you lose one one you lose two percent at this point um, this is it's a tenth of it yes yeah, so it's twice as quick um, but you lose ten times as much or there's this one, which is really quick, uh, to ten twice as quick again, but you lose a full ten percent of it. Um, I haven't even researched that one because it just seems it just seems so wasteful. When there's no real reason why I couldn't just extend this out all the way to here <laughs> with a massive massive stack of these these coolers in order to, to keep it efficient. I probably wouldn't do that. I'd bend it round halfway out and bring it back up again with a second row across the top. But you know the potential is there. Um, I probably don't actually need to move these up a notch because I think I think it's probably okay. it's probably okay. Um, it's, it's probably okay as it is. There's enough buffered in the outputs of these machines and in the in, in the little bit of pipe here that I think I don't actually need a tank in there. In fact, given each of these is holding a thousand in the on the output side, um, and then presumably another 500 there. That's what 499 there. That's about to finish and be dumped into there as soon as as soon as there's enough space to. We've got like six, nine, twelve, fifteen thousand in the, just ready waiting here to be pumped out. So that, that's that's fine. I don't need a tank there. This tank is mainly for one. There's one of the rest. So most recipes when they when they finish using up thermofluid they spit out the warm stuff the 25 degree stuff which should go come back down here into these tanks and then back into here to be recycled there is one of them that just to be awkward and to give me a headache and make me grumble spits out minus 10 degrees c after it when it finishes so it takes in minus one of one one of the really cold ones and spits out the the only fairly cold one <laughs> which is just just there obviously there to annoy me and then these machines are obviously keeping the trying to keep a supply of this and these these pipes are completely full so as you can see we're, we're, we're absolutely fine on those um, once things actually start running we may need to have a few more of these in here and we may need a few more solar panels as well and at the moment we're produ we can produce 18 megawatts from here um, and we're only using 1.1 but that's because most of the system is asleep nothing is actually running because I haven't got all of the stuff flowing in and to get the, just the full sort of flow going through there's as you can see here there's all, all these actually not these empty belts um there's no uranium but other than that these these ones are waiting and ready to ready for additional um, inputs should i need them but down here we've not got any mirrors coming in uh, so that's why this belt's empty um, and that's needed for polarization data i think one of those anyway so we need to make sure that we just keep we, we, i need to get that supply running and that needs iridium which is another story i'll get onto that later <laughs> So, yeah, so this is basically built up apart from that machine which isn't finished. So it's sort of, I think the best way to describe it is I've sketched out the outline of, of how of where everything is going to go and I've got it onto, onto a bus layout. And that means I can now, what I need to do is make sure I've got all of the inputs and then I can start this running and all, oh, all of the outputs as well, all the trains and things. I can start this running and just see what comes through, what I'm short of and, and, and where, where the problems lie. And once I've worked that one out, then I can start expanding out to... Um, to solve, start expanding out this way with more and more of each of these machines to try and solve that problem. I suspect that at some point electricity is going to become a problem, but there's loads of space down here for solar panels. I don't need to worry about accumulators because I'm in space where there's um, there's no such thing as night. Um, obviously, I'm in quite a high orbit because the sun apparently never goes behind the planet, and these solar panels are running at like 930% efficiency, so they're producing crazy amounts of power. These are amazing up here. Uh, 
yeah, so that's that's the startup made in energy science. Oh, and we've got holmium plate production over here. That's that's fairly trivial. So that's yeah. I think I've made quite a good a good start on this. Um, it did take me about three hours on stream, so um, it was it was a big job, <laughs> but um, I think it made for quite a good stream. People seem to hang around for a while anyway. So if, if you want to see see me actually playing the game and thinking about it, uh, do come along and join join the streams. They're at um, I'm, I'm I'm doing I'm doing them every every Wednesday at the moment at, uh, from 7:30 uh, UK time. So yeah, please please do drop in if you if you'd like to watch me play, and uh, hopefully it'll be interesting. So I've got a few, yeah, as I say, I've got a few things to do up here. The, the drop-off stations, extending the line up and so on, but that's mostly done. Uh, that can be for the next stream, I think, because that's something I want to do. It's something that's interesting in, 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 and worth watching. The other things I've been doing, well, <laughs> I've been um, I've been looking at Kothar, and this is the one that had the embarrassing problem with the, um, the Kovarex, which we're going to gloss over because that's embarrassing. And that meant that the entire base ran out of power. We got pummeled by meteorites. Got pummeled up here by meteorites as well. Oh dear. Um, so I need to head over here and fix that up. And also, while I'm here, I need to set up a bigger iridium processing facility. So I'm going to do something essentially the same as I, I already have on Henke Sesui. That's uh, this this planet for people who aren't to keep track of all the weird names they've got. And, up, so I'm gonna, and the recipes are almost identical. So I'm going to make essentially a complete copy of this, but with the extra input. I'm going to do this bit a bit more neatly because I've, I'll have had time to think about it properly rather than cramming it in in the gap like that. But essentially, it's going to be the same sort of thing. Uh, the biggest difference is I don't think we I don't think there's any oil on um, on Kothar, so we're going to be doing it all with um, coal liquefaction. But I don't think that's a problem. It's just going to mean a, a, a very small change to the way the system works and I need to make sure I remember to go out there with some heavy oil except that I think there'll be some heavy oil there already because um, I've already got it yeah I've already got it doing all of this stuff so there's bound to be some in the tank down here so that's that's fine um, so I need to build up I need to build that up that's the next essentially the next thing on my list um, and as in order to do that I've made a blueprint. I've done the standard thing where I, I copy the blueprint into one of these requester chests using this system. So you can grab, you can take a blueprint like this one, drop it into the onto the box there, and then the requester chest will summon all of the bits and pieces you need to make that particular thing. Somewhat ridiculously, the um, the bottleneck in all of this construction is stack inserters, which is crazy. I mean, I'm, I'm just it's simple. I'm just not making them fast enough. So down here. Down here, there's a, there is only the one machine making them, and it wasn't it wasn't building them up to a high enough stack when I was at, when it when it first started. So that that was a bit rubbish. I probably should have just copied this whole thing over a couple of times, made a few more of these, get it running faster. I did put in an extra um, cog making machine to make because that was the, one of the limiting factors to make that go a bit faster. But even so, it's 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 not the best way to do it. Put it put it that way. Uh, but it but it's working. It, it's producing them gradually, and I've had other things to mess around with while I've been down here. So I mentioned that I was going to need um, uranium two three five up in space. So I've put in a couple of extra stations up here on the top of my um, rocket launch facility. Oh, I need to extend the this up as well. Uh, can I put that in in exactly the right place? No, but I can put it in more or less the right place. I'll put that there. Um, that's to allow the the um, Request a chest to automatically summon the um, the rocket, the cargo rocket pods they need in order to build the rocket, because these two just can't, as you can see. Um, so yeah, here we've got sulfur because I think I'm going to need sulfuric acid up there in space sooner or later. So I thought, well, let's get let's just get the sulfur brought in by train, so we're ready for that. And then uranium, but um, let's fix that since I've noticed it's a problem. As you can see, I copy and pasted the stations, and apparently didn't quite pick up all of the uh, inserters to get them programmed correctly. So this is where the uranium-235 is supposed to come to, so it can be loaded into the rocket and then sent off to that uh, landing pad I was showing you earlier. Um, it comes from all the way over here. This is my area that's doing all of the... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? All, all, of the, all of the uranium processing. So we've got massive quantities of, um, of the... Uh, centrifuges here. I need to. I need to make. I need to make a load of copies of this. Maybe I'll do that before I head off to Kothar because this is far too slow. Um, I'm trying to fill up a train down here, and it's now got up to 7,000, and we're waiting for that to get to like 20,000 before it'll actually summon a train. So yeah, I need to come over here and multiply this by about 10 or something crazy like that, just to make sure. Just to get a decent amount of um, 
of the uranium-235 flowing through. And looking at this, this is a fairly ugly... Well, actually, no, no, this is okay, because I'm using, I'm using the box system. So each of these boxes contains enough um, 235 to, to run the machines a couple, a couple of times over. So that's, that's, that's okay. I just need to extend it a bit to make it run a bit faster, a bit more, a bit faster, produce the stuff a bit more quickly. So I'll, I'll, I'll do that before I leave. I've also done a little bit more um, combatty stuff over here. So it, again, this has been all been while I've while I've been waiting for the um, for the rocket stuff to get to, to get to get all basically to get enough um, stack inserters built. So I've built another one of these little outposts to get my to push my um, artillery range out a little bit further. And so with that, I've been able to um, essentially wipe out all the biters out to about here. Um, I haven't bothered with these ones because they're further away than I'm not planning to claim this territory at the moment. So at some point I'm going to build up a wall probably from here like that and then across there like that. So it's going to, it's going to have a corner in it, but never mind. Uh, it's an internal corner, so that's not so bad. I've also cleaned up this area again a bit because the biters were expanding back into it because I've been neglecting it. But, you know, a bit at a time. <laughs> uh, from here I should probably... Can... Can I actually? How far out can I reach with the artillery? Yeah, I should probably destroy, take out these bases as well, and then I don't know. I'll maybe make it, maybe make a choke point there as well, just because I want to build across here because it's where it's narrowest, and it just seems like the or maybe across here. So I do need to claim a bit more territory before I can do that. Um, but that's just something I play with whenever I'm on Norvis and waiting for stuff to finish. So once that rocket is is full, which it, I mean to be honest, they, the the um, the rocket is very, very nearly full. If we look at if we look at how much stuff is in here, uh, there's only like two and a half rows left of stuff to put in. So when one more of these finishes and gets all of the um, the stack inserts it's waiting for, that's actually going to be too much to fit in there. So I've got a fair amount of space in my inventory though, so I'll grab a bit of that manually as well. Then then I'm going to have so, I'm going to, so what I'm going to do is I'll head off to Kothar, get all of that set up, and then the big advantage of this is it means I'll then have an I'll need to send I'll need to send out a second rocket anyway to get all of the bits I need and possibly a third one to send out rocket parts supplies and so that can mean I'll have I've got the chance to do a load of the building work before I start thinking about before I make while whilst I'm, I'm still expecting a rocket to come out so I can have sort of second thoughts and third thoughts without it mattering too much and I can just load all the stuff extra stuff I need into the second rocket that's going to come out so that's going to make that a little bit um, a little bit easier so one of the other things I've been doing is waiting for this rocket here to fill up with to fuel up completely, um, ready to be sent out to, um, to to get to Ganymede, because I've got basically my vulcanite supply has died completely because I've run out of rocket parts on that planet. I do seem to have quite a few um, cargo space capsules on that one, so it's not so bad. Um, I, so so I don't need quite so many of these, which is why it's. Um, loaded the way it is but I'm waiting for this to fuel up and then when it does I want to oh, I'm going to launch it and oh, to rocket parts drop let's get that right um, and yeah we're gradually fueling up so we've got we've got quite a big a big fueling system going on down here it's pumping pumping the rocket fuel through and then we're turning it into actual rocket fuel um, and then I've got some tanks in down here so hopefully next time next time I need to send a rocket to Ganymede there'll be plenty of fuel in all of these tanks and I can just dump it straight in there rather than having to wait a million years for it to fuel up which is getting a little bit a bit frustrating I feel like I've been waiting for this all evening um, but then once that goes we can send it out to um, out to Ganymede which is this one and as you, as you can see this is this is where it lands we do all the obvious stuff with the rocket parts uh, load it in here and we'll yeah, then we'll then we'll start having a supply of vulcanite coming through again, which will be rather nice because we're a bit starved for it at the moment. Um, and stone as well, if there's anywhere that is actually needed. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I mean, apart from turn it into landfill and fill this up. Um, oh, actually, no. At the moment, it'll all be being turned into glass, which is vaguely useful um, on very in, very in on um, on Norvis, if nowhere else actually. So that that's okay. Okay, I think that's everything I've been up to since the last um, since the last video. It's been, I feel it's been quite busy, especially with the um, with all of the the science that's been going on up here in in orbit. Um, and so the next episode, so by the end, of, by the time I produce the next episode, hopefully I'll have finished all of that um, build up on Kothar. We'll have a nice big. Um, uh, a nice big irid irid iridium produ production facility and things will just generally be working there again properly that'll be nice so that's my next thing to do and then once I've done that I'll start looking at my to-do list again and going hmm what do I fancy doing next <laughs> so I hope you'll come back to find to uh, to join me for that to see what I've been up to 
Uh, as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.